Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. No, I mean, you know, in those days, I mean, I'm talking about the 60s, you know, there was still what they called Restaurant Row, which was, I think, like Wilshire, La Cienega, famous restaurants, the Brown Derby, Carino's, Chasen's, Liz Taylor, who just died, used to order the chili from Chasen's, and they would fly it to her halfway around the world where she was making a movie because she liked that chili. Uh, Taylor the Cock, um, God, there's, there's a lot more, uh, you know. Where was Lowry's? Is that Lowry's was there, but Lowry's was actually later. The one that I'm trying to think of that uh, is, I had my birthday up there, which was actually at sunset, was um, Cyrano's. Cyrano's. I had beef bourguignon, which was like, you know, ground beef. But, but it was, uh, you know, it was really a disappointment. It's like, I want beef bourguignon, they bring me hammer. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but they were really very nice places, and they were, my, my, my father was a successful doctor. He was an eye doctor, you know, he was a, the, the, one of the few guys that ever graduated from USC School of Optometry. It was like, he was the Mexican in his class, and he was good friends with the Japanese guy. But he landed on First Street at a time when it was really just growing, and so he was the Rotarian, and he was the East LA Chamber of Commerce, and he was the Belvedere, blah, 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 blah. And his whole world, these guys were warriors. They weren't combat veterans from Korea, they were the generation after. And his generation and his world was about proving that they were not better than, but as good as anybody else. And they paralleled the universe of what the expectation of good citizenship was. Jesus and Mary League and church and the whole nine yards. And, but it was also a very Republican orientation. And he was just trying to make himself into a well-respected Mexican-American. Because he had started off in Second Ward, El Paso. And now he was the SC guy and a successful businessman. And so he married the right woman, who was totally neurotic because she was a self-hating Mexican. Blonde hair, changed her name, didn't want to be associated with all that. But he married the wrong woman, right woman for that kind of trip. So I was getting that at the same time my mother was calling herself a Chicana before I called myself a Chicana. But the exposure was that we got to go to these really fancy places. And I'll wait for the siren because I work alone. <laughs> so we got to go to the end and, you know, I was, I was always aware that um, we were usually the first or only Mexican family in this place. And it's funny because my dad would get admonished for talking to the hill which were Mexicanos, you know, his wife, you know, because he would speak Spanish, you know, because she was trying to get over it. But for Dad, it was just fun, and it made it fun. And so we were going to fancy places with cloth, and therefore we were sitting at home, praying on which fork to use, which glass to use. You know, if a lady gets up from your table, you stand up. And when she comes back, you stand up. That's just, you know, you hold the door open. You're polite, you're not speaking to a spoken to. What do you say? To help, you know, we're kids, but they're help, and so there's a level of conversation. And there's all that sort of thing, and it was kind of like really classist and really kind of old school, but that's what it was. And so most of the time I was going to school in East LA, and I was running around in the streets, and I was, you know, a little mocoso, <laughs> you know, I had my Pancho Gonzalez tennis racket in my hand, but on the weekends I would be wearing nice clothes and we'd go to Carinos, and we'd see movie stars, or the Brown Derby. We'd see movie stars, you know, and so it was kind of a you know schizo, but it was lovely. It was wonderful, and they, they, they held the door open for you when you pulled the car up and whatnot. And the Mexicanos, the Mexicanos that worked there, always noticed when Pop get out of the car. They always looked and went, ah, he's one of us, you know. And I remember that that was really a trip, and so Pop was cool with that, you know. But uh, his wife was a little whack about it because she was like, you know, she was. You know, poverty and oppression, you know, sometimes manifests that self loathing behavior. But our benefit was that we were kind of exposed to all that. Uh, you were talking about MacArthur Park. There was some very nice restaurants around there. There was a great hotel there that I can't think of right now, but it's, was it the Hilton that was there? Right off the, on 6th Street? I don't know. There was a Sheraton? Sheraton. Something. It was a, the 80s on, yeah, it's 655. Well, that's on Figueroa. Oh, no, but there was a fancy hotel, big fancy hotel, 
on 6th Street going down right past MacArthur Park. And then that's where also where the, um, the I want to say the, the iMagnum was. Or, or was it the, was it the, was it the Bullocks or the? Bullocks. Was it Bullocks? Yeah, where the Southwest Library is. Southwest Yeah, and you go there and they would actually have tea and crumpets while watching, you know. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. I loved it because I went there and we were going with my, my, my uh, older uncle who was getting married and he was going to buy a trousseau for his wife. And so I got to go along as part of the wedding party and we got us a live lingerie show. <laughs> well, we was drinking and I was under age. I was like maybe 18. But I remember sitting in like real life naked girls in their underwear as, and he's sitting there shopping going, I'll take that out or I'll take To me it was like, oh, it was so swag, it was so high tone. But that was part of the area that 